If you take a closer look at all the problems we are facing around the world, you'll notice that almost every one of them falls under either a social, economic or environmental heading. And you'll see that our problems are global and increasing, which shows us that when it comes to solving our problems, nobody is getting it right. Everything we consume, produce and use is provided by nature, which immediately tells us that the social well-being and economic stability of all humans will worsen as our environment deteriorates. It also shows that people, economies and nature are inseparable. While we see endless improvements with the things we manufacture and produce with our advancing technology, we do not manufacture or produce people, economies or nature. So if we don't make them, what is it that we do with them? We make decisions about them. Every day we all make thousands of decisions about ourselves, our finances and our environment, from indi individual decisions to government policies. And another word for making a decision is management. So we do not manufacture people, economies or nature. We only manage them. And they are connected, self-organizing and unpredictable. No matter what we do to upset the balance, they will adjust and continue, but in changed form. We manage ourselves, our economies and our environment, and everything else falls under being what we manufacture or produce, our tools or technology. Every day we all use thousands of different tools to help make our lives more comfortable as we manage ourselves, our finances and our environment. Our tools are advancing rapidly, while the things we manage are declining rapidly, which shows that our management or the way we make decisions is what's failing us on a global scale. Our decisions have been upsetting the balance for many thousands of years, but it has sped up rapidly in the last century. Every problem we are trying to solve is a symptom of our management. The knock-on consequences of every human action throughout history can be traced back to someone somewhere making a decision or developing a policy. Our decisions are failing us. And that is because until relatively recently, nobody realized that almost every decision made usually has three inseparable elements that must be taken into account simultaneously. The first is decisions are made by people, which means there will be short and long-term social considerations to check for, from whoever is making the decision to friends, family, customers, sellers, colleagues, etc. The second element is the same decision will also have short and long-term environmental considerations because everything we use, consume or manufacture has come from nature. And the third is pretty much everything we use or do costs money, so the decision will probably have short-term and definitely long-term financial elements to check for. And because people economies and nature are intricately connected, as soon as we make a decision for any of those elements in isolation of the others, it sets off a ripple effect to affect all three at some point. And we are constantly making decisions and developing policies for those elements one at a time in isolation of each other, which is why our problems increase no matter how hard we try to solve them. We are using the same decision-making process that causes our problems to try and solve them. Now, we are failing to associate our increasing problems with how we make decisions because we are still usually able to achieve our short-term objectives regarding whatever need, desire or problem we are trying to address. The long-term ripple effect of damage across the interconnected web is invisible and only felt much later on and often far away from the original decision or policy. In 1983, a scientist called Alan Savory discovered why our decisions are leading us into more and more trouble. He uncovered an outdated flaw in our management, which can be found throughout all ages and cultures. No matter what type of management he studied or looked at, when he traced things to the point of decision itself, he found there was an identical, genetically inherited process being used every single time. And this inherited process is not designed for us to have to ever think about more than one element at a time when making a decision because, just like any other tool using animal, we are born to only ever have to make our decisions or meet our needs from 
a single, simple social perspective. Because our technology started off as simple stick and stone tools and we were not able to manipulate or harm our environment with those basic tools. Our inherited process is simple because our decisions and tools were simple. We existed in balance and harmony with our environment and decisions were only ever made from a social perspective. There weren't any damaging long-term economic or environmental consequences to have to think about because we weren't managing those things yet. We couldn't manage nature or economies until our tools began to advance. And that was made possible with our control of fire. With advancing technology, we were able to manipulate harm and gradually manage our environment. And at some point we added a financial component to that web. We had added environmental and economic elements to our social decisions. But as the complexity of our decisions grew, our simple inherited process was causing us to unwittingly break the three components down into more manageable parts. We separated the inseparable and we split the elements up in order to make things easier and manage them one at a time. We began to address either social, financial or ecological needs, desires or problems. But what we didn't realize is that each need, desire or problem itself had become more complex. We had created social, economic and ecological elements which would have to be considered and balanced simultaneously for each individual decision. This was probably the biggest turning point in human history and is where we should have adjusted, updated and broadened our inherited decision-making process to include those new elements. But nobody realized it at the time. Luckily, it is not yet too late to reset our course in order to steer ourselves away from the proverbial iceberg. What if I told you we could change the entire trajectory of our future by conditioning ourselves to make a slight change whenever we make a decision? We can adjust the outdated glitch by making a couple of simple adjustments to our inherited decision-making process. Scientists have developed a decision-making framework which fixes this problem. Anyone who uses this process is able to successfully manage and balance the unique social, economic and environmental elements of any decision or policy. It is called the holistic management framework because the whole or full complexity of every decision is always considered. This framework is a guiding filtering process which ensures the best decision for whatever situation this decision is being made within will automatically float to the top and become apparent. It essentially makes it impossible for anyone to make an unsound decision given their unique circumstances. The whole process is based on environmental health being made paramount while still understanding that a perfect decision cannot be made for the environment alone as there are always social and financial elements tied into each decision, which must all be tested and balanced out. The shift to this new process will empower decision makers everywhere. As soon as we teach ourselves to broaden our perspective at the point of decision, we immediately stop making decisions or developing policies from the incomplete narrow perspective of either a social, financial or environmental need, desire or problem. And instead, we learn how to zoom out so we can always clearly see and then balance the full short and long term social, economic and environmental elements of any decision or policy. The first country to develop an agricultural policy using this process would be the first country in history to address the root cause of global desertification and climate change. Whoever does this first would trigger a massive paradigm shift, setting off a domino effect across the world. The risk of anyone doing this is zero. The reward is securing our future. And that is priceless.